In this video, we're going to show that the taxicab metric on Rn is indeed a metric. And so for some setup here, I'm going to use vector notation, x with like an arrow over it. And what that stands for is a vector that has n components, where uh, the components are like x sub 1, x sub 2, up to x sub n. Same convention for y. So I've got y, I'll call it y hat, even though it's really an arrow above. I'll still just call it y hat, because that's what I want to do. And its components are y1 through yn. There'll be a z later on as well, but uh, hopefully you understand kind of the standard convention for what does a vector look like in Rn. So remember that uh, what is a metric? It's the idea of a distance function. In this video too, I'm assuming that everybody's comfortable with like absolute value is a distance function on the real line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that concept and talk about a distance function in, again, a higher dimensional space. So what is the tax cab metric? What's its actual definition? Well, it's a function D where you plug in two vectors from Rn into it and it spits out a real number. And so what does this function do to those two vectors you plug in? It's going to sum the absolute value of the difference of the components of each of these vectors. So that's a lot of notation there, just so everybody's cool with it. That's like x1 minus y1, an absolute value, plus x2 minus y2. So it's important that you just see here that the indices always match. So we are always gonna compare the indices uh, as they align with each other. That's what we're taking differences of here. Okay, just to also get us um, comfortable with what's the tax cab metric kind of look like, let's do an example in R2. So let's think about what would the unit circle be in R2 if the taxicab metric is how I choose to define the distance between two points. So for R2, I'm going to use coordinates x1 and x2 instead of like x and y like you might be used to. Think of x2 as y if you like. So the unit circle, remember, that's going to be all the points whose distance from the origin, so again, I'm in two dimensions, just 0, 0. I want to know all the points x1, x2 whose distance from the origin is 1. And uh, this gives me an equation to play with. That says absolute value of, this is really x1 minus zero. I just didn't write the minus zero. Similarly here, this would be uh, x2 minus zero. So that's where I'm using, again, the definition of what does the tax cab metric do? I add the absolute value of the differences of each component. So again, that's where you're maybe seeing it for the first time right here. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do from there is I'm just gonna play with this equation. So we're on a little bit of a detour again, and then we'll prove why D is a metric in Rn. I just wanna get everybody comfortable with what's the tax cab metric kinda of look like in a nice case. So this absolute value equation, it's gonna split into two cases as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna think about what happens when x1 is bigger than or equal to zero. And uh, well, if I rearrange this then, if that's the case, I don't need the absolute value anymore. So what I can do is I could drop the absolute value here and I can get x2 an absolute value by itself. And that's what I've done here. And I'm just gonna think about that is that's telling me about two lines. That's telling me that x2 is legitimately equal to one minus x1 or x2 is the opposite of that. And what I've also done is if x2 is one minus x1, that's this part of the line right here. And also what else do I know? Like I know that neither one of these can go past one. So I, I realize now that I'm writing on graph paper here, but I didn't align my axes to actually reflect that. So what do I want you to be comfortable with? These points right here and right here, this is one on the x2 axis and one on the x1 axis. Okay, so that's the first part of my line. But again, from this absolute value equation here, I could have the opposite of this is true as well. So x2 could be x1 minus one, and that looks like that piece. So, so far, that is what half of the unit circle, as far as the tax cab metric, uh, looks like. And that's again the case that x1, that we're to the right of zeros on the x1 axis. And you probably guessed the other case is what happens if you're to the left of zero on the x1 axis. Well then again, in that case, this is really negative x1, so I'll add that to the other side. And that's why I've got plus x1 over here. And so from this absolute value equation, again, that splits into two kind of legit linear equations. I don't know what I mean by legit there, just two straightforward linear equations. You get that x2 is actually equal to one plus x1. And I draw that little line right there. So this is what one plus x1 equals x2 looks like. Or you get that x2 is the opposite of that, which of course is the line below it. So the unit circle, as far as the tax cab metric is concerned, is this diamond shape here. All right, cool. So let's actually get back to the proof at hand. I hope that that makes you feel a little bit more familiar with what the tax cab metric does, but let's actually prove that it's a metric on Rn now. So we just looked at an example when the dimension is two. Let's do this in general though. All right, so if you've seen the video that I made on the discrete metric, there are four things that I'm gonna to check to determine if D is a metric. So D is a metric if it satisfies each of the following. So again, there's four. So the first one is that uh, the distance between any two vectors should be non-negative. 
And so in our case here, we're gonna leverage, for all of these, we're gonna leverage what we know about absolute value. Like we know the absolute value of real numbers, uh, that that function is a distance. And so I know that it satisfies all the good things that a metric should, um, in particular, something like this. So absolute value of the difference of two real numbers, certainly non-negative. And what are we doing with D now? What does D do? D just adds a bunch of these expressions up. So D from the, ve uh, the distance between these two vectors, X and Y, it's just the sum of a bunch of non-negative real numbers. And I know that when I add a bunch of non-negative stuff together, non-negative numbers together, the result is non-negative as well. So I'll put a little check mark that yes, for sure, D is just a sum of non-negative real numbers, therefore, of course, it's non-negative as well. Part two, what's the next thing you need to check to ensure D is a metric? I need to make sure that the distance between two vectors is zero if and only if the two vectors were the same. So again, we've got an if and only if here. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it this time, instead of doing P implies Q and Q implies P, I'm gonna do kind of a, a faster if and only if kind of proof, like a string of equivalences. It's a little bit sloppy, but oh well. So what would it mean to say that two vectors are equal? Remember that that means that, well, each of the individual components have to match as well. X1 has to be Y1, X2 has to be Y2, etc. So that has to hold for all I between one and N. But in that case, if all the individual or components are the same, then when you take the absolute value of the difference, it's always gonna be zero. So the absolute value of the difference between these things is zero for every index I between one and N. And so, well, that's true if and only if when you add them up, when you add up all these things, you get zero. So that's a nice little if and only if there. If the sum of a bunch of non-negative things is actually zero, then each non-negative piece has to be zero. So that's, that's a nice if and only if right there. Finally though, what do we recognize this as? That is exactly the distance between X and Y. So what do we get at the end of our string of equivalences here? I get that the two vectors are equal if and only if the distance between them is truly zero. Put a little check mark by that one. Number three, kind of a symmetric property that a metric should satisfy. The distance between X and Y better be the same as the distance between Y and X. And uh, all we need for this one is to know about absolute value of a real number. The absolute value of A is the same as the absolute value of minus A. So if I look at the distance between X and Y, by definition, again, what's the tax cab metric do? It's the summation of this absolute value of XI minus YI. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this property now. I could factor a negative out of this expression and I get the same thing. So that's all I've done. I've factored a negative out, there he is. And now I'm gonna use this property again that says uh, if you drop this negative, you're golden. And so that's what we're gonna do. We can drop the negative sign and we get another true expression that's the same as what we had before. And of course we recognize this now. Well that starts with Y and ends with X. So that's the same thing as D vector Y to vector X. So that's the distance between Y and X. And what do we have? Again, distance between X and Y, same as the distance between Y and X. All right, last one, and what is usually like the most uh, difficult one, or at least the one that takes the most work out of each of them, not to say that it's necessarily difficult, we need the triangle inequality. So here I'm introducing a Z, so same convention. Think of this vector Z as having components Z1 through Zn. I need to make sure that the distance from X to Z is always less than or equal to the distance from X to Y plus the distance from Y to Z. And so again, we're gonna leverage that we know the triangle inequality as far as absolute value of real numbers is concerned, where the absolute value of A plus B is definitely less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. And so here's what we're gonna do. Let's take a look, let's start here. The distance from X to Z, those vectors, well by definition, again it's this, so we're just writing down, you know, look at the definition of the metric you're playing with, write it down, and now we're gonna start playing around. What do I wanna do on this side? I see that I wanna introduce a y into the, you know, a vector y into this thing somehow. So what am I gonna do? Well, just inside this absolute value, we're gonna add zero in a slick way. Maybe you've seen this from like a real analysis class. I'm just gonna add a, y -I min uh, a minus yi and a plus yi. So I'm truly just adding zero. So again, I maintain this equality here. Again, that's kind of a nice little analysis trick that you see very often when playing with the triangle inequality. By the way, just to emphasize, you know, I'm doing all this stuff now. I don't want you to focus on the summation. I'm just focusing on, uh, I'm taking the absolute value of some real numbers and I'm playing with them. So what am I gonna do? Well, now I'm going to apply the triangle inequality that I know to this one. I know I can split that. Think about this as A and think about this as B. And so when I split it with the triangle inequality, that looks like this. I've written these parentheses here just to emphasize that I'm still taking the sum of all such expressions here. And what do I know about the summation? Uh, it's kind of distributive. So I could think about the summation can gets to go on each of these, right? I could sum those separately and add those at the end rather than compute this first and then sum all such expressions. Those are the same thing. 
that's what I'm finally gonna do. So that's the sum of xi minus yi. You can see also I kind of quit doing the red color here, plus the sum of this one when I think about putting the summation just in front of that, which is legit. Uh, just the summation of all things yi minus zi. And of course at the end you recognize each of these two individually look like dxy, and then this one right here is d to xc. And so that finishes the triangle inequality. We've proven all four of the axioms for what it takes for D to be a metric. And we conclude, yes, the, the taxicab metric is truly a metric on Rn.